Welcome to the Crucial Classics Bring Your Own Copy series, where what we do is watch movies together. We are going to watch all of the biggest titles from that golden age of Hollywood. So join me as we will sync up, press play at the same time, and let's just enjoy the magic from this golden age of Hollywood. Hi, welcome back to Crucial Classics. If this is your first time on our channel, take a look around. We have plenty of content for you to binge. We are officially, so we're heading into our third year. We just had our two year anniversary um, a couple weeks ago. So we start by taking a look at the wall of my living room that is decorated like this because old movies are important for the past 32 years. And typically what we're dealing with on this channel is movies in this era. Um, but today's slotted programming has been preempted by the passing of the legend Richard Roundtree. So I have this obligation need to really just Let's love on Richard Roundtree. Um, number one, Richard Roundtree had over a hundred movies and TV appearance credits to his name. This will be the movie on our channel in a vein or classification that is totally incorrect. And that's what I'm really prepared to have a good discussion about to debunk. Um, so, there is not going to be a black exploitation movie that I will feel the need to. It's a crucial classic, and we need to be watching it, guys. So, um, if you have any type of conception that the movie Shaft, we're gonna clarify how and why it's not a black exploitation film. Any of these truly black exploitation films that are very clearly identifiable, following shaft um even me i can have the slightest little bit of appreciation for you know what they were doing is they were by us for us you know so that was giving people in my culture an opportunity to have first-hand experience in the film industry the distinction a very clear huge distinction about shaft not that Gordon Parks is the first black director of a movie, but what the headline that I got was the first making a high budget movie by a big time studio. He has that credit to his name. One thing that I wanna just say to kind of give us a, an entryway into this exploration is that I mentioned William Wyler probably being the goat of classic movie directors, and that's just because I think that through his catalog, we get an understanding of a director's part in the project, right? It's definitely their vision that really just will be the sazon on their project, right? Like there is no separation from if this movie was directed by you, the end result is you, like showing us your vision, right? So let's know that that's what a director's role and Heart is in the project and let's now talk about Gordon Parks but also Richard Roundtree and just you know really there is not a whole lot of separation between the importance of both of them for this film um, but we're just definitely needing to be timely with watching this because of the recent passing this week of Mr. Roundtree. I want to just let you know my education that I got really in depth today is I watched an interview of Richard Roundtree speaking. He is explaining that he starts out kind of doing his thing in media, right, by being a model for the Ebony Fashion Fair. And that was big time back in this day. Whenever the Ebony Fashion Fair would come through with their show, they were a little traveling show and they would go around, they would tour around the country. And whenever they would come to your town, it was just the thing to go check out and see. So Richard Roundtree was a male model for the Ebony Fashion Fair. Legit. He's getting um, nice exposure as a model. Because that really was his deal. He was a model. And the Ebony Fashion Fair would work its way across the country. They have wrapped up a tour in... Los Angeles, Bill Cosby is having a party for the Ebony Fashion Fair models. That's how 
Roundtree is in front of Cosby, who at the time is pretty, you know, important presence on TV in I Spy. So Roundtree says, when I say I want to be an actor as the next thing with my career, because it's not like he was leaving the Ebony Fashion Fair, but it had opened up some options for him, right? His name was a little bit known. And Bill Cosby said, do yourself a favor, go back to New York and study your craft. Why going back to New York is important is the Negro Ensemble Company. It is up and running in 1967, and that's probably about the time frame that Cosby and Roundtree are having this conversation because Roundtree said that he had been acting before Shaft since about 1967. He actually probably had to be in the Negro Ensemble for a few years before he graduated up to the place of being able to be in their productions. To go and join the Negro Ensemble Company, it is founded by Robert Hooks. This is the reason why Shaft is not a black exploitation movie. Robert Hooks is the star of the movie Trouble Man. Trouble Man has a score, which is the movie within the film, and this soundtrack, which is original songs that accompany the theme of the movie, right? The mood of the movie, so just songs independent. They're not gonna be within the movie, but they fit the theme of Trouble Man, right? Well, that is created solely by Marvin Gaye. And he's kind of doing a first of his kind with that. I do believe that Isaac Hayes actually does do the score of the music inside of Shaft as well. That for the longest time was not very clear to me until I did see today that Isaac Hayes wins the Oscar for best score. So that lets it be known then that he is doing the music that we will hear inside of the movie along with of course the famous theme Shaft. Shut your mouth, I'm talking about a bad mother shaft, okay? <laughs> Marvin Gaye also is one of very few black artists in this time that's getting that credit of also doing the score, not just the soundtrack, because this album is his soundtrack. These songs on this album are not inside of the movie. Marvin Gaye creates the music inside of the movie. Robert Hooks, the creator of the Negro Ensemble Company, not the only, but a founder of it, um, is the star of Trouble Man. Now, watching the movie Trouble Man, just a statement that I make about it is that this dude, Trouble Man, Robert Hooks, the star of the movie, who is the equivalent of the shaft of the movie, right? has got to be a green beret. Trouble Man is not a black exploitation movie. Trouble Man is not a pimp. He's not a drug dealer. He's not a criminal. He is a private investigator who has got to be a green beret background before he became a private investigator. He is just tactical. He's military. He's handling his, his business. He's kicking ass. He's not to be effed with. And he's handling a very broad, situation all on his own you know they push him too far and then he's handling it all on his own there's he's not a criminal he's dealing with criminals and he's kicking criminals asses but you're not gonna tell me that as i'm watching that that he's anything stereotypical he is nothing but a hero and you know he is a bad pressed and dressed very good looking handsome you know just specimen at the exact same time so that is exactly what is going on with Shaft because of a lot of things. Roundtree, in probably about 69, gets a call from Robert Hooks, who is the leader of the Negro Ensemble Company and is working with Richard Roundtree, being a student in this ensemble, and he is saying to Richard Roundtree, hey dude, you gotta make a decision. You cannot be both a model and an actor because Richard Roundtree was trying to do both. He was a student, so he wasn't starring in plays for the ensemble yet. He said he worked his way up to having a bit part in one play. He said it was a three hour long play. He had one word in the play and Esther Roll, the mother from Good Times, is sitting in 
uh, at a table in a chair right next to him. They're both little bit part players in this play. And finally, he said it was like a three hour long play. Finally, his part comes up and he's kind of, he's like, I must've drifted off. I'm not paying attention. She elbows me in the, you know, ribs. And I'm like, I feel like he's like, that's right. That was his um, line in the play. So he's learning his craft is what he's doing. It's not necessarily that he's, you know, standing up on the stage performing. And I started to say this a few minutes back, but when I heard that name Negro Ensemble Company, the first thing that was coming to my mind was, oh, wait a minute, is this the group that Harry Belafonte and Sidney Poitier were working in, you know, a decade or so before? No, I didn't get that it was the same thing because when I looked it up, it was that distinguisher that Robert Hooks along with others founded this and so that is Richard Roundtree's mentor Robert Hooks a year later he's making his own not black exploitation movie but there's distinguishers about this right he's the star of the movie we have a legend in black music being able to do the score for it that's Marvin Gaye's foray into film was this project right here but it's opened some doors, people. It's just a new era in film. I said it in my little tribute to Mr. Roundtree. He is forever changing the way that we see ourselves on screen. And we do kind of need to give him that credit for just this new vision of ourselves on the screen. What kind of trailed after, I would say this one and Trouble Man, is the entrance, the entree of the black exploitation thing. But even at that, like what I'm saying is there has to be a little bit of value in those because they were by us and for us. And then the thing the most that resonates for me about Shaft is if you want to know who I look like because I look like my father, um, Shaft is who my father looked like in 1977, 78, 79. Um, it, there is going to be a moment when we're going to see Shaft walking down the street in the opening of this scene where I swear if you need to know exactly who my father looks like, you will see him for a split second. There's every single angle of Richard Roundtree is not my dad, but there's going to be a moment where it's like, I'm going to be seeing my father on the big screen. So black exploitation films, not Shaft, not Trouble Man, don't appeal to me because I can't resonate with that because that's not my family story. And you know, so, you don't really need to tell our culture that Shaft is a black exploitation movie, Trouble Man is a black exploitation movie. There are, when we're dealing with pimps, drug dealers, and criminals, those are black exploitation movies. But we have the ability to discern and know the difference when that's not what we're seeing portrayed on the screen. So we as black people absolutely have an innate ability to have this really passionate pride about Richard Roundtree bringing in a new vision of ourselves on the big screen in a big time budget movie. This was one of three profitable films for MGM in 1971. They were in dire trouble. We've got several movies of MGM in these later years where I just have to keep on saying it. You know, they're kind of in financial trouble. Well, by 1971, they're really all the way there. They were saying this movie and its success that year was kind of what kept them from filing bankruptcy, I think, that year. I don't know if that ends up being the story for MGM, if they like sell off to somebody else, but yeah. They were in financial trouble and this movie helped them out of that. It was one of three very successful, profitable movies for them that year. So, um, I touched base on the Ebony Fashion Fair. I touched base on the connection between Robert Hooks being basically the mentor for Richard Roundtree and being where he goes to Richard Roundtree, join up and join a society of people that he will be learning his craft from. At the point when Robert Hooks calls him and says, hey dude, you gotta make a decision. Are you trying to be an actor or a model? You can't do both because his modeling thing was continuing on with the Ebony Fashion Fair and just other gigs that he was getting too. It required a lot of travel and he wasn't up to the point yet of being a star in any of these plays. So he kind of just was in and out of town. And that's when Hooks was like, you gotta take this more seriously. Robert 
Round, Richard Roundtree was serious, he decided to quit doing the traveling model thing and became a cab driver in New York so that he was making money and he was local and he could continue to be closer to home to go to his classes for the Negro Ensemble Company. Richard Roundtree made 100 films and movies. I was happy to tell you about that and why being the very first of a movie of its kind, the vision of its director Gordon Parks, who has a very well-rounded career as just an artist, primarily a photographer. He's a musical artist. He is interested in making film. He writes books. So he writes a semi-autobiography and then he makes a movie of it called The Learning Tree. That is going to be a movie that we will watch at a point in time. I'm going to reserve it for Black History Month. But I love that movie. I grew up watching that movie. I did not realize that's the director that's about the movie that he makes before he gets his opportunity to make this big time, big budget movie for big time MGM. And Richard Roundtree is saying that Gordon Parks is this clean, elegant, gotta be dressed to the nines man that Shaft is. And that is the reason why he is portrayed like that, because that is Gordon Parks' vision. And Gordon Parks insisted that Shaft is going to have that mustache. I know that that is the reason why when I see Richard Roundtree, I see my daddy, because he has this mustache. <laughs> he had that little short afro, and he had that brown leather jacket. That is the reason why, I swear to God, people, I am going to be seeing my father on the big screen. Um... This mustache was a controversial thing. I was about to start by just keeping this very high level. We would have had about maybe two minutes of an introduction. And the thing that I had ever heard about this movie is that it is based off of a novel. It's written as a black character in the book, but evidently urban legend by the time that they're getting it into the screenplay, because it's the same author that wrote the book that does the screenplay for this. He had changed his mind and he wanted the character to be white. And so now it was kind of a little bit of a fight for it to be a Richard Roundtree portraying the role. And it's like, that's not true because the book is what was read and then was sold to MGM to be made into a movie. And how would they kind of have agreed to do that based on the book doing well? And then, but now when they're gonna make the movie up, they're gonna change the race of the character. They're like, that's just not, what was going on. If you get a little bit deeper, if I get into hearing Richard Roundtree himself speaking about it, what he said was kind of the controversy around this movie was that they did not, the studio did not want him to have this mustache. Well, Gordon Parks, the director of the movie himself, was known for his big bushy mustache. And he said, no, absolutely not. Roundtree is going to have a mustache whether I'm pasting it on him every day or not. You know what I'm saying? But he's going to have this mustache. It was a statement. It was a, hey, we are not going to conform to being clean cut. And for black men, facial hair is a lot easier to do than the clean cut thing a lot of the time because of the texture of our hair, people. Um, so it can be kind of a lot of irritation. Marvin Gaye brings that gorgeous trend in. He did the 60s clean cut, that can hurt your face, and then he just was like, F it, black and proud, manly and proud, you're gonna deal with it and proud. And so, kind of facial hair and mustaches and stuff wasn't necessarily an accepted thing on screen yet, and we're getting that with Shaft. Richard Roundtree ushers in a new phase of the way that we see ourselves on screen. People, we are allowed to be proud as hell. And he is a classic gentleman. At the end of this interview that he's doing with Roland Martin, Roland says, 100 years from now, because people are going to be accessing your material 100 years from now, what do you want them to know? And he said, a classic gentleman. Sidney Poitier, he said, Gordon Parks. They were at this class level, and he's like, I would be very proud to be associated and thought of as that myself. Just a gentleman with class. A crucial classic. It is with pride that I am about to, for the first time in probably 20 years, watch Shaft. It's not something I need to be watching all the time, but 
it is very relevant right now and it is worth another look there is just it is to be said universally spoken and that Richard Roundtree was beloved this movie has appeal across all color lines and um, yeah I'm proud to be let's explore the actual film of this now I worked first job at Blockbuster Video. My favorite in the series is Shaft in Africa, and I guarantee you Shaft in Africa was one of my 10 employee picks that the people needed to be knowing about. What we do on this channel is you're going to have your copy of the movie, and we're both about to push play on it at the same time. I do not leave you hanging. The only reason I'm watching Shaft right now is because I've been able to find the film. The place where I give you information about that is over on my sister Pinterest page. There's always a link in the description of the video. Click on that link, it's going to take you over to my Pinterest board that I will have made for this film filled with pictures from this movie. And if you need information about being able to push play on a copy of the movie with me, that's the exact runtime of what I'm watching. That's where you can find that information. I would suggest trying to watch me and the movie on the same screen at the same time. There's ways to do it. Two tabs, this video of me and one, the movie and another, they'll lock side by side. Pull the movie to take up more of your screen. Put an HDMI cable in the device you're setting that up on, put it into your big screen TV, one screen and your biggest screen. If you can do everything wirelessly, no needing to go side by side. There is a button on this video of me, play on TV, picture in picture. That shrinks me, floats me. Watch the movie full screen at all times. That is the please do that experience for my channel. Then you just move this video of me small into a corner of the movie. There is going to be a runtime timer in the corner here, hour, minute, second. That's my playback of the movie. That's how you know how to be in perfect sync and we are having a watch along experience together. Okay, runtime hour 40 and 15-ish seconds, 16 maybe. All right, playing in three, two, one. Leo, okay, he's old school. Louis, I like Louis better. I called him Louis for, like I said, almost the first two years. Okay. There is, I guess, a subway, right? And so Parks has put these cameras at different angles, and all the direction that he gives to Roundtree is you're coming up off of this subway, own it. You are going to be walking through, is it Harlem? And he's like, own it. And so Roundtree says there's going to be an improv moment where he's going to have a interaction with a taxi because he's owning it. <laughs> Here he comes. Um, he's about looking like my dad right now. I think it's like when it's the wider angles of him. My dad had this coat for sure. And my dad had his hair like this and this mustache. And my dad is his color. Yeah. That was improv. He said he loved that. Now that's cool. He's got the starring role. This is really his first starring role. People, I have this coat now too. I should have got. I should have put it on right now. <laughs> do, 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 do. That's my dad. <laughs> That is my dad. Oh my God, people, it trips. That's my dad. It trips me out. That's my dad. It's when he's turning to the side like that. Oh my God. Other side. right now this is not exploitation people you have to get your life together to use your own ability to do research 
and understand what concepts mean and how things don't apply to things that don't apply. This is a trendsetter. This is breaking through barriers and based on a success of it, it gets tried to be replicated and scaled down. And it again becomes more of that bias for us. It doesn't have those big studio backing quality of production. And you know, who in the F is really trying to watch it? Except for whoever it appeals to. And it is kind of a read for filth if that does apply to you. Okay, the music is by Isaac Hayes. All right, he's getting the credit here inside of the film for the score. Shaft! Can you dig it? When there's danger all about. Damn right. When doesn't he say that? Oh my gosh, people, right there is my father. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay see Gordon Parks I was going to apologize if I was getting his name there's a Banks there's just a lot of different names but yeah Gordon Parks is the director The thing that Isaac Hayes is really good for is a 20 minute long song. So there are versions of this song, right, that are not as drawn out. <laughs> oh, is he here to get his shoe shine? Twice he's heard that. This is giving me the feeling of trouble in, but also kiss me deadly. Oh, this mystery. Oh. So are they criminals? They're not cops. Uh -huh. He showed a badge. Shaft showed a badge. Okay, so are they these fools right here that are looking for him? They would, people in this neighborhood would know cops. And they would have said, 5-0 is looking for you. They wouldn't be saying two dudes in a funky plaid jacket are looking for you. So something is going on where two groups of people are looking for Shaft now. Did Shaft just pay him? just mean I don't have use for dirty postcards was he gonna get something planted on him oh he doesn't want to be seen with him oh yeah because it's just for that everybody sees it Oh. 
sink, stool, pigeon. Uh, okay, so he's not in Harlem. They said he's living in Greenwich Village now. Oh, oh, you... Was a correction. Okay, so he actually did not connect with these two. This is good. Oh, plaid jacket. Oh, why are you running so hard, Chef? from Uptown Harlem. Oh, because he's getting him from behind. So, Shaft had a badge. He, um, is like a legit skilled detective. See, he's doing more than that dude from Kiss Me Deadly, because the dude from Kiss Me Deadly was just a cover on who did divorce cases. Oh, oh. Ooh. Is this, does Shaft have an office in this building? Okay, yeah, he was strapped. Wow. Shaft just disarmed him. Oh, and you're leading the way too far. Yeah, because there's somebody else. He's handsome. Uh, oh. We love that. Now that just, it, I, as at that moment, I was in <laughs> correlating. <laughs> he doesn't, like I said, every single angle of him doesn't look like my dad. There's never been ever a thought like that. <laughs> Chef's office. <gasps> ooh, 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 Oh, well, he was probably going to have to be in order. Doesn't Shafts get to have a lawyer? Shaft has got to be knowing his rights. <laughs> oh. Oh, he doesn't say.
is this before Miranda writes and Shaft? Like, Shaft is allowed to have a lawyer present that is speaking for his client. He really doesn't have to be here right now if they haven't charged him with anything. This movie is easy to follow, and it's good so far. He ducked, that's all. Oh, well, y'all, we're just not letting him know. Oh, you're trying to wire him up? You're trying to wire him up? Maybe it wouldn't put him on the street, though. <laughs> well, why does that have to do with him? You can't get this information on your own. Shaft has been saying that he's not going to do this. I have a feeling we're about to hear it one more time. Um, well, how come you know about Bumpy's private phone? Do you have the numbers? Or, it's just like, y'all folks can do your work better than this without needing shafts to be giving you details. This music writer, Isaac Hayes, right? This is Bumpy. Yeah, Bumpy's. But he's he's into um, waste management. Soprano. This dude was in the Negro Ensemble. Right. Be more civilized in the way that you're looking for him. Well, you don't send two people that are told that they have to bring him back however they need to do it. Okay, so... Well, Chef said he has an office.
what does two bits do? What's a bit? I always think that, that means pennies, but it cannot be. 20 cents? Two dimes? Oh, I... Oh, he said more than that. Does this version that we're watching have um, censorship going on? Because he said more than that, than, more than mother. <laughs> okay, this is Bumpy. Yeah, I'm saying that Shaft said that he has an office and he hung up the phone. Marvel, you know how to contact me like you are civilized. Acme, what? Is this his office again? I see that this thing that I have is like a second and a half back. That's Muhammad Ali's <laughs> amp up man, right? Like just always amping him up. That is interesting. That man is in a couple of movies. He said he's going to be there, then he should be there. He didn't say that um, he was going to be there. He just said he has an office and that he knows. Oh, they're going to wait. It looks a certain way. It doesn't look good. Oh. Uh, oh, it is right here. Oh, you better be. Oh. <laughs> oh, it needs to get up. Oh, yeah. Asta. Asta, Asta. And he got thrown up the window. Oh. The detective. Police. <laughs> uh, it's his daughter. Waste management. Uh. Soprano. Settle it with me.
you've got a rule that somebody else doesn't is out. And your daughter would not be found. Yeah, if they've got her. Hmm. But he said he hasn't got. That's the mystery to solve. A job. Okay, he has a... See, January 1971, they... S oh, well, damn, Got it. Oh, fun. My baby. Bumbeer, you're gonna get your life together. Now you're gonna stop doing some of the things that you're into. Or are you gonna become a man of integrity like the Godfather who won't get into that shit? He doesn't want it around the schools. All right, you know, Bumpy, wrap it up. You know. I believe this man right here is Moses Gunn. This is who um, shops it. Okay. When he has something. Right. And don't be sending fools down here again, ever again. Um. <laughs> Loving the um, change in what we're allowed to say. <laughs> oh, is he going to blow his smoke in Shaft's face? Because he said he's going to come for Bumpy. Okay. Yeah, I mean, dude flew out the window because Shaft ducked. That was the way that they were trying to get him to come. Up. They were not about to be pan... <laughs> okay. They, there's my... D It changed the way that we see ourselves on the screen, people. Like, literally seeing ourselves on the screen. That's Gordon Parks. The director. to my age. Okay. Oh my god. Oh. 
How has he landed on somebody named Buford? I missed the stuff. I, it's, I wasn't expecting to be so distracted. Um, So what they were saying is that Shaft has gotten enough money that he used to be based in Harlem. He's relocated to live in, in Greenwich. Is it Greenwich? Greenwich Village? Whatever. And But he's still got his street cred up here in Harlem. People, I, he's handsome as hell. I guess my dad is too, okay? <laughs> Who is Ben Buford? Well, where did we get on this name? <laughs> oh, I was say that right away. I was wondering if that was Shaft's woman, and I guess it is. Wow, he's got a key. I mean, this we haven't seen, right, on screen so far. I mean, and we're not seeing anything yet. Oh, okay. I mean, we have not seen anything like that. But, I mean, as much as we had just seen, we hadn't ever. Al Roker was talking on the air the other day and he was saying that they had to sneak in so whatever age she was in 71 when this came out he said they had to sneak in because it was rated R okay a change in film Dude asked him, where was he going? <laughs> oh, he's not speaking to him. Oh, he knows what it is. He's hired now. Oh, wait, wow, shaft. 
Because <laughs> he still has his license. This is cool scenery. We haven't seen a this viewpoint of New York before. The music is nice. I really do like this music. So, yeah. Just my knowledge of Marvin's score. I thought I still had my disc here. Um, for Trouble Man. I knew that was a very... Like, it puts Marvin in a, a small group. This is sad. It's too cold for him. Yeah. Shaft loves the kids. Oh, those fools saw him? I mean, Shaft's cool to be in this area. He saw them. They were looking at him, right? Oh, so he's... Shaft is not even about to be caught. He's getting himself into a position where he can grab one of them third floor was where this Buford person is having a meeting at nine okay so Gordon Parks was Malcolm X's godfather to one of his maybe it was two of his daughters which might have been his twins his last baby's born um But that's, it's, Gordon Parks just really had a finger on the pulse of our culture. He, with his photographs, I feel like they were saying he was taking pictures of, like, civil rights era stuff as well. He's godfather to Mel Mex's daughter. Like, he's aware of what he's portraying here. Shaft is coming in here alone. He knows how to handle himself. Huh? Oh. Look, there's Malcolm X. about what oh oh that's how he knew who Buford was because he just knew who he was that's why I was like where is this name coming from okay in that way Yeah, this, this, oh, okay, this is who Bumpy was saying, okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That looks like a, at first, a, okay. They said they're going up onto the, Okay, those fools are going to the roof. <clears throat> okay. Bumpy. 
didn't necessarily say this dude's name, but he said the militant group that they're about. And so now Shaft knew this dude's name because they used to be, I, uh, oh, who is doing this? Wow, that's all just crew just got it. And they just didn't go the same way. This sweet little lady. Is somebody else just going to come busting up into her house? They're coming back in. <sighs> what is this full eye and the scissors for? He going to use scissors on shaft? Is this fool about to try and put scissors into shaft? Boy, Shaft just be letting fools know that they better not ever again do shit to him. <laughs> and then he walks away, too. <laughs> he is a bad mother fool because he's walking into these situations by himself. He's got whatever he's got, but you know he's got moves, too. I love Shaft in Africa. is my favorite one. He's very ingenious. Well, yeah, and he said, like, his little group of people, they're not about being armed and stuff. Okay, these are the ones that just did that. Are coming down. These are some brothers. That shaft. Uh, the cops are coming. Do we hear a siren? Yes, right? Probably a finger man, is that what he said? People, this is a really good movie. I wasn't expecting to enjoy two seconds of this movie in all actuality. I feel like I've seen it twice, period. People, I'm really glad that I decided that we were watching this movie. The police? He says this policeman's been holding out on him. He knew more about what was going on. So that's why...
Shaf said he was had a place to go and don't call him Judas. He's bringing this dude to the police station. He's bringing somebody with him. Or no, that's what Chef said is that he had a friend's house to go to. I heard him say friend. And he said, don't do this Judas thing. And he's got a place to sleep. Okay. <laughs> um, well, at that point then, oh, you don't owe. Who is this chick? So he doesn't, it's not a lady friend of his like that. He don't have a key. Yeah, huh? Oh, in this house. She's very generous to be opening her home to this fool. She don't know him. Okay, I thought he was bringing that dude with him to the police station. <laughs> then do that. Oh, he has information. Intel. Mm hmm. Casino stuff. So they grabbed his daughter, Bumpy's daughter. Um, so he's had this folder. He's leaving shafts to just the bait. Uh, about his clients. Okay, so now it's a different group of People, he don't need to be scouring the hood. Is this a different woman?
I know. Oh, it's shaft. Oh. Okay. I didn't like that. Why is he bringing him along? Well, I mean, so those mobster people did his crew? What for? They're not associated with Bumpy. That's an interesting hairstyle choice. This dude's keeping the little rim of his hairline, but he's just right here. He's is he does he have that shaved like that on purpose? Oh. Is he gonna try and frisk chopped? Talk slick to him again. Oh, oh. Is, um, Shaft's gonna chop him? He's gonna call. Shaft is here. Shaft is the man, dude. This is the way you're just waiting for an update about your daughter. Why is he getting the money? And they took his daughter? Or did he do something to his own daughter, dude? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, he was given a performance. Uh... Ah! There's a difference. Oh, he's given the money back. Oh, it, the price went up. Is this fool about to get into a safe or something?
So he doesn't really want Chef to find his dog. Oh, okay. He did want that. But he did arrange that, right? In his con way. Is he given the money though? Oh, he said, what's the price? Did he say set a price? Oh, at him? Because he said Shaft needs an army. So it's just like that. So Bumpy was, yeah, he was trying to give Shaft an envelope and he got... Uh, okay, right. Well, he probably really is, for his daughter, his baby. Oh. Money flow. Okay, so where I'm saying he, he's not giving the money right now, he's laying back. To, This fool does interesting little posture. He's very evil. Huh? <laughs> he just doesn't have a cat. Oh, so Shaft isn't going to be trying to go up in there getting five in what they owe them. He just wants to get this girl back. Like, okay. This is interesting because Shaft is so ingenious. I wouldn't necessarily think that he feels like he needs backup. Like an army. You know what I'm Like muscle backup. Like he would need somebody that's able to be strategic with him. plot is thickening so yeah bumpy just gave shaft a little pathetic oh da -da 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 -da. is shaft in the strip club right now the isaac hayes dude yes right on This song, Stand Alone, is a good song. It sounds a little different than this. Not in the movie. Um, okay, no. Bobby gave him a little pathetic ass envelope. He can afford 20000 for Shaft. Oh, these are those dudes. Look at him. Look at Shaft. Full as a bartender, you're not supposed to serve people into are passed out on. Oh, he's touching this guy. Hmm. 
Does he say right on? I feel like he said right on in the song. Okay, it's just whatever. Scream. Oh. Singing is your thing. This is good music. Like, as a bartender, you have to have a cutoff game. You can't just serve people until they're passed out on the bar. Let's watch the count. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. He gives a generous pour. This is really good music. These fools know that they're looking for Shaft. And Shaft is coming up and talking to them. Now he's gonna fake like he's gonna get drunk. Oh, and that's why he has this dude going in to turn on his apartment light. Are we seeing it happening? <laughs> so that's how he's going to get out of here. Shaft is up talking to these fools and they're play are they playing him or they were really looking at um his window. They I think we need to pay attention, is all. So these people are from out of town, right? And Bumpy knows that... Wait, like, Bumpy told them that this dude was on the case? That's weird, I like, why were they, um... When they came in, they shot everybody up in that building. They were trying to get Shaft. Because somebody pointed out Shaft. Shaft. Just seconds, okay. <clears throat> Deacon. His apartment.
because they know him by name. I, oh, oh, damn, shaft. Okay, all right, um. We saw that already. Wow, okay. In 71, if a movie was rated R, they were showing this much? I mean, I don't... I feel like we have seen some movies that were classified as R in their time. It was, um... The Thomas Crown Affair was, but that wasn't all the way in 71. Like, they just... Movies have changed. Strangers. <laughs> he cracked that bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Does he have to go in? <laughs> oh, by himself, too. Okay. Is that fool going to talk to him? Probably am. So he's about to write something out. They have his daughter. Well. Is he, like, okay with this, that she's still there? <laughs> yeah. Do we see her anymore, or is she just... Not on the camera anymore. Shaft.
Okay, is it gonna be there on time? And because she left his door open, is it a problem? Oh wow, okay. Keeps it frozen. What does that do for it? Oh, because he's going to freeze the other one. <laughs> what does that do? What's that? Oh, one of those fools? Oh, no, that's the cop. But he wants more information because he knows that Shaft got something out of them. Oh, they just need to keep each other apprised. Why are you? Oh, he heard. What do you have the Roomba? Uh, they, uh, they did hear that. Oh, it's too close to 12.30. Yeah. Well, that's kind of a creepy um, picture. What, is, what does it mean, Shaft? Were we going to have a little art discussion? Oh, yeah, he's just got to make this phone call first. So he already told the other dude to have people oh wherever he's going to tell these people that he's going to be it's a good movie That's interesting the way this dude calls him Judas. Shaft doesn't work for him. He's his own boss. He's an entrepreneur. And he just obviously gets well paid. That's what they were saying. His origin story is he came from Harlem in that slum that we saw him getting shot at. He's made enough money doing his own independent thing. Oh, look at him. Um. Oh, is this where he's wearing his, like, head-to-toe leather suit? Damn. Damn, Roundtree. I mean, it is so important to be watching this movie, period. I'm seeing that now. But we just lost this legend. He lived a long life. He was 81.
I was just, I'm observing the richness of his skin. That's what really is allowing me to see my dad right now. And I was just thinking, my dad gets that from my grandma's jeans. But it's interesting because my grandma was really caramel colored. She was, she had Native American. Her grandmother was full Native American. And some of her children are lighter. She has a couple of children. My dad and one of her daughters very dark okay okay <laughs> oh i love every every single thing. <laughs> oh, is he having one? Okay, so they're, he's getting taken. Look at how he's dressed. Like, he's ready for combat. Huh? And I get Shafty just be walking along by himself. Okay, dude is there. With two, right? He needs himself and two more. That's what Shaft told him. Um, I don't know. I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, that just Shaft is armed? Likely. He's keeping it in the sh shoulder area. Huh? So, I mean, that's not what we just watched a Fistful. It's not right here, right? Like, he's got to get to it. And aside from that, he's just got back up but until you know he cause Shaft doesn't know what he's about to encounter before they're half a block behind him are they gonna leave him hanging this music is really good I it won the Oscar I'm, in a way, I'm glad that I am watching it to get this edification that Isaac Hayes did the score. We know he does the soundtrack. So that's the distinction. Soundtrack is that, I'm just talking about Shaft, right? Like the songs outside of the movie. And typically they will be completely outside of the movie. Um, but this composing, right? It's a different game as an artist. leave shaft hanging do they know the backup like the ins and outs of this area okay they're doing their assignment Oh, there's Marcy. She does look just like a good girl. Her little afro pops. Oh. Okay. 
this is probably me. Yeah. Up to do. Yeah, okay. I mean, I would understand. Is she gonna be honest? Did it? Oh, this dude is. Is it about to go down? Oh, damn, oh, damn, oh, damn, oh, damn. Did he get shot? Oh, no. Oh! I just said he had to be fit enough. Um, are these guys gonna get Marcy? I didn't remember they got shaft hurt oh this dude has a gun so the direction was if they come out in the alley then one of the other dudes is supposed to follow Did they shoot Shaft? It kind of looked like he got shot. I like that move. Grab both of the guns, right? And be ready to use them. He was. <gasps> Can they call a doctor for him? They're gonna take the bullet out themselves. Okay, well he has his own doctor on standby. Damn, so Shaft was shot. And he got kicked in the face after that. Yeah, they actually didn't have guns. He came in there with something. What is this dude doing? This is Sam. He came with his little tweezers to pull the bullet out.
jump shaft is going someplace later on today. Wow, John. Shaft is a bad mother! I didn't know they messed him up. Well, what's he thinking about? How can the brother... He didn't even observe that this was going on in his space. Not phased. So this cop just got here because Shaft didn't do that, did he? Did Shaft get some of them and they also got him? I didn't remember that, Shaft. Got two of them. People, this is, like, stars better of a movie than I thought it was going to be. I haven't recalled a thing about it, because I was really um, grooving on that Isaac Hayes music that was at the bar. I've listened to that song, Standalone, a lot. I didn't realize it was in the movie, too. We haven't necessarily heard his music for a little bit, though, huh? Oh, a tip. So Shaft got shot, got bandaged up, and is leading the ambush. He's coming through on a rope and through the glass. Oh. That's somebody asleep at the front desk? No, huh? Right? Like, they don't. 
need the front desk. What was that? I didn't quite see what we just saw though. Okay, so everybody is armed this time. Yes, okay. And each one of them is getting paid 10 G's a piece and shafts getting 20. There's music again. I have to, I'm just liking that Isaac Hayes' do more respects. I didn't, I just couldn't clearly ever tell if he had done the score too. He did a very good job. So it had an MGM budget. It wasn't the highest budget, but it made, I feel like, let me throw out some figures. I feel like it was 2 million or under to make it, and it made over 14. Ooh, damn, that was somebody at the front desk. They were saying though, again, so this was one of three movies that MGM made a profit on in 1971. And it helped them avoid bankruptcy that year. Guns? What is this that they're unzipping? This, you know what? I'm just like, how come this is so tactical? They know what they're doing. They had this stuff ready to go. Like, why does Shaft know what exactly where he's going right now? Oh, I thought that was a gun they were wrapping up in newspaper. I'm gonna douse it in alcohol. That's gin. Well, it should do the trick. That's a high proof, dude. Oh, okay. Gin is so nasty. Gin tastes oh. <laughs> like pine needles, right? I never, I, I never got onto clear liquor. I just could never do clear liquor. And gin always, to me, tasted the way that pine needles smell. So that was not a good time. I mean, the when the, we lost, how come Shaft knows exactly where he is going right now? These people shot him, kicked him in the face, 
basically knocked him out, right? Like, it was weird. He did continue to hear this man talking shit to him, but then dude was having to revive him. All he did was get on the phone to... He didn't call the police, huh? Shaft didn't call the police. Who was he calling? Because this dude was sitting there in the room with him and said he already had these people right here lined up to go. But he did get on the phone to somebody. Shaft. And then now they just know that they're here. And this is so tactical. Oh, hey, look at this gun. Are the police... Is that who we just saw? Are they here too? Shaft called Bumpy. Is that the only phone call that he made? I feel like he made two phone calls. Oh no, he told Bumpy to get three cabs lined up. Oh, he's back with a little bit of something else, huh? Not just a Coke and a straw. Wow, so these are just yellow cab Ubers. Okay, well, why are you honking? Was that a part of honk three times when you get here? Okay. I was like, shop smokes? Not really. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The music! Oh my gosh. How are they getting out? Don't let the brother with the fire hose get it! Somebody did get it, okay. They had one casualty. This movie is excellent, people. Wow. This music right now is doing its job. Okay, and just the taxis right on time. And the cops were not involved. Bumpy was Moses Gunn. He was in the ensemble. Five stars. Wow, people. 
best music in a movie so far. And this is what I've told you guys was the best music on the channel so far is North by Northwest. Is Isaac Hayes? No, huh? It won another Oscar. It won two Oscars for this music. That was, oh my. It won an Oscar for best instrumental. I wonder if it was the instrumental. Damn, people. Pride. Perfection. I wasn't expecting to like the movie. I but We needed to watch it. I had an obligation to do that. Oh, my gosh. Yes, there's every reason why we are black and proud and proud of Richard Roundtree. Rest in peace. And he changed the way that we see ourselves on screen forever. And it's just freaky as fuck that I literally see my father when I am watching him. So, like and subscribe. And we will see you soon with our normally scheduled programming but this is my channel black and proud and i am very happy that we have this added to our programming outside of black history month we'll see you soon bye bye thank you guys so much for watching this movie with me i hope you had as much fun as i did hey hit that thumbs up button for me especially if you're hearing my voice saying this right now <laughs> you watched to the end um, go ahead and subscribe, turn on your notifications so you can always be aware of our newest titles to watch together. See you next time.